Hi, I'm Fuzzy Zeller, and this is my U.S. Open. Most players will tell you, hardest tournament to win would be the U.S. Open. The guys know the challenges, but they keep coming, don't they? You know why they keep coming? Right there, this little thing right here. Those names on there that go down to history books, that's why they keep coming. Everybody says, you played Wingfoot, right? I said, yeah, I've played Wingfoot. I've played Wingfoot in the U.S. Open. That's the hardest conditions ever, ever. I was hurting that week pretty bad, because I'd wake up with muscle spasms, I'd lean one way one day, and then I'd get up the next day, and I might lean to the left the next day. And it was a, a very, very painful to walk. And the doctors kept telling me that I had a protruding disc. And, uh, whoa. I wasn't even sure I could get to the first tee. That's how bad and how much pain I was in. But golfers are amazing because it is a mental game. Some of the things that we can do to kick it out. And that's just what I did that week. I kicked all that pain out and was able to perform at a pretty high level. And I'm not gonna lie to you, it takes luck to win a U.S. Open. Only because you're not gonna hit every golf shot perfect. You're gonna get some bad bounces. You're gonna hit some errant shots. But you hope your errant shots go to where you can at least play from. And my errant shots went to spots I could play from. And I was playing a golf course that uh, just met met my eye. I mean, from the tee, to the landing area, to the green. Par's your number in the U.S. Open. That is your prize, the par. Now, if you shoot one over, that's fine, or two over, that's fine. You're still in the game. You haven't blown yourself out of it. But I thoroughly enjoyed what I was seeing And then I was able to hit the ball in the areas which put the advantage in my favor and not the golf course's favor. Zeller's 66 in the second round was the lowest score ever recorded in an open at winged foot. I had one day where I wasn't quite on, but I, I kind of grinded it all the way out. I just had the patience to wait on it. It's like the bass fisherman sitting out there not catching Bo Diddley, but he's gonna fish all day. And maybe he might catch that one. Well, I caught the one. Get in the hole. Fuzzy has the good grace to look slightly embarrassed in the rough off the tee and the rough with his second, a birdie, and he takes the lead. That's what a golf tournament is. It's a show. It's a show of, to see who can whistle up and hit the shots under the heat, under the time, under the conditions, make those putts, especially the short putts when, you're, when your nerves are jumping and you can't hardly swallow and you can't say your name, pull that putter back. As I say, sometimes that putter gets heavy, real heavy. The third round ends with the top trio standing precisely the same in relation to each other as when the day began. Irwin, one stroke ahead of Zeller, Zeller, one clear of Norman, the excitement uh, for that final round was, yeah, I was ready. You know, the main thing you want to do is get out of the gate. Stay at four under, so co-leaders once again. It's kind of got a good thoroughbred. Get out of the gate and get out without any trouble. Now Fuzzy Zeller playing two. Down and across the slope. A birdie two for Fuzzy. And what a killer blow for Irwin. How about that? I was able to read the brakes because there is a lot of break in those greens up there, especially when they're fast like that. But you know, you get into a rhythm. Uh, golf's a game of rhythms. Um, and I got into a, good, a very good rhythm. Three straight birdies. You can see the putts are going right in the middle of the hole. They're not rolling around the edges and jumping and walking in there like uh, 
a guy that's had too much to drink going home at night. So obviously I was doing something right. You got to keep the pedal to the metal if you're trying to win. You start once you let up off that gas pedal, it's hard to get her back down. So it was full steam ahead. Four holes and four birdies. Irwin also birdies the sixth, but Zeller has transformed the position. He's seven under par to Irwin's three under. And Norman's also now 300. I really didn't watch scoreboard until about the eighth hole. Then you start looking at scoreboard. I knew I was playing well enough to win. Now, did I have the guts to do it? I had enough faith in myself. You know, like I say, I've always been a player that has never been afraid to screw up. This to go four under. <laughs> Wriggles round the edge, but it disappears. Oh, and here's a real dive hook. Look out for this one. It's out of bounds oh. over there, Rossi, isn't there? Well, he's not out of bounds. It's caught in the real thick grass, but it's not very good. When you get excited, you kind of overcook things. And I just overcooked her just a little bit. Zella, in trouble. I'm looking up, I'm looking down, I'm looking sideways. And that's when you look at your caddy when you have no ideas what to do. Maybe he'll come up with a good suggestion. Smashes it as hard as he can. Now, the people ask me all the time, well, what, do you, what were you thinking? To be very, very honest with you, I moved uh, the, the four to a five. I said five was my number. You know, you can give the course back one shot, but you don't want to make six. Double bogey in that scenario was not good. Suddenly, within minutes, it really has become a genuine two-man race. Now that's all positive in, uh, when you're playing a U.S. Open, knowing that you're staying away from those big numbers. The big numbers are the ones that kill you. And he's done it. Remains four under par. A stroke out of the lead. Greg Norman and mark that one down as the hole that would have done it if he wins in the end. This must go in to keep him ahead. It was a good putt. Good line. That's my, oh, it ran out of gas. But now he and Greg Norman are tied at four under, with Norman already safely up the 18th fairway. Hey, I made a bogey. You accept. It's the US Open. You're going to make bogeys. Hale and I are standing on the tee, and we were watching where Greg was playing his tee shot from. So after he uh, had moved on down the fairway up toward the green, the next shot that I saw was this putt right here, which was an end. He could stand there with a thousand golf balls, couldn't get it within 10 feet of the hole. But as great players do, on occasions, they make great shots. And this was just an absolute great shot by a great golfer. Not bad looking putt though, is it? looked at my caddy, Mike Mazio, at that time, and I said, he has just beat us. He goes, what do you mean? I said, that was for three. His drive is right here where we're hitting from. I said, I saw his second shot, putt. I said, that's a three. And before I hit my second shot, one of the USGA gentlemen uh, came up to me and said that was for four. And I said, well, where the hell did he hit his second shot to? He said, in the stands. So I took a sigh of relief, I picked up my towel, and that's when I waved it at him. Come on, Greg, give me a break. You're making me stay here one more night because I knew I could make four. I said, we'll do it. He's done it. And we lived the fight another day.
Monday, June 18, begins damp and dismal. I was still on a mission. I wasn't done yet. The uphill putts are a lot easier at Wingfoot instead of trying to play the defense type putting downhill left to righters, right to lefters. Yeah, I was playing offensive golf and I, I kept it under the hole, which is the place you want to be. Game on. Oh, the game was definitely on. Well, what a beginning. Zeller one under, Norman one under. We're out there pounding each other, having a good time, enjoying the game. We enjoy the challenges that that crazy game brought. Off to the second. Now from very long range, Zeller's third. This might be one of the longest putts I've ever made in my career. But it was a great leg putt, and that's all I was trying to do was leg. It went in there with a wounded foot. Just fell in. All of 70 feet, another birdie. Those are bonus, bonus type things that happen to a player. And now Greg Norman has this for a par four. Turning, but not quite enough. Oh, how tragic, a double bogey six. And there they were a moment or two ago, both one under par. Now suddenly a three shot swing, Norman one over, Zeller two under. Well, you gotta keep the pedal down. There's no letting up. Here he is putting for another birdie. And looking very, very good. In the hole. A birdie three to give him at least a six shot lead. At least. If this were a fight, they'd stop it. I mean, this is really criminal what's happening out here now. Well, you kind of force Greg's hand because his shots have to be more precise, more accurate. Whereas I'm looking at a little bigger target, because, you know, it just broadens it out just a little bit. And I was able to hit the shots that I had to hit. I never felt safe until I hold it on the 18th hole. That's what the U.S. soap and that's the fear that puts in players. That's a great feeling right there. That's an absolute tremendous feeling. Ah, now, returning the surrender towel of yesterday, Greg Norman said, okay, I give in. You had two professional golfers going head to head. They were playing at the tops of their game. Two guys having fun, enjoying what they do for a living. Once I got to the green and saw the ball go in the hole, then I would. I could take a sigh of relief and breathe deep. And just think about the accomplishment that I just did. Not only did you beat great players during the week, but you beat a tremendous golf course, and you beat par. Sweet as a nut, 67, three under par for the playoff to Zeller. What a performance. What a champion. It's one of the greatest thrills in the world, is knowing that you're on there with all the, I guess you can call them superstars of the game. And now I'm in that history book with them. You dream about things like that, and then all of a sudden your dream comes true. And there it is, the history book. They can't take that away from me.